He was the only singer that Toto couldn't Toto eyes, as David Page puts it. Plus, we talk about David Foster on this edition of Rock History Music. This is where I'm going to sound like I'm an idiot, but I forget the gentleman's name that was that replaced Joseph. That came in after Joseph. What's your thoughts on, on that period? Uh, uh, Byron, Jean-Michel Byron, is that what his name? Is? Yeah, that was one of them. We had Fergie Fredrickson. First no, I know that. I'm going to Fergie in a second. Okay. Um, Jean-Michel uh, was a kind of an experiment. That's what the record company had found him and said, we think this would be a great lead singer for Toto. So we were like, we had heard a couple of things that he had done and said, yeah, that's that's interesting for, to us. Because Toto, you have to understand, Toto used to be a play behind so many different singers that we thought, oh, just give us another singer and we'll Totoize him. You know what I mean? Kind of uh, uh, make him... Uh, uh, mold him into the being the lead singer that we wanted you know what i mean and sometimes that worked and sometimes it didn't you know when i uh i told uh joe this he laughed i told steve pete this too i said when i got the greatest hits package and i was all excited because i heard there was new songs on it so i'm in vancouver and i go down to the record store and, and i'm going who is this guy and then I heard, can right. you hear what I'm saying? I love, can you hear what I'm saying? I think that is just a- Yeah, I do too. It's one of my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. That was Mike Picaro. That was Mike Picaro a lot on that too, his bass playing. Yeah. And you see how, uh, what an instrument, what a great player he was, you know? Again, that's going back to having a band, having people that contribute a lot to your music, you know? And the arrangements were really part of the compositions themselves when it gets down to it, you know? the way Toto, the guys used to arrange their own parts and kind of produce themselves, you know? So it was, a, we had a band full of arrangers and producers and writers, and that kind of helped in the process. I uh, I, I wrote a letter to the to the Toto fan club. Radio guys don't aren't supposed to do this because it's uncool, right? right. Yeah. Uh, but I wrote this long, angry letter and I'm going, and my girlfriend at the time says, what are you doing? You can't do that. <laughs> and I'm going, and I did anyway. I'm going, where's Joseph? Oh, what the hell? Yeah. Joe said thanks. David Foster. Uh, brilliant. Can't say enough about him. He's a great guy. Very big heart. Uh, very generous. Does a lot of charities. And uh, uh, has given of, of his own time. And I can't say how much talent he has. I mean, look at After the Love is Gone uh, with Earth, Wind, and Fire and Jim and Jay Graydon. And uh, what a talent. What a superstar. What, a, what an icon. What an iconic talent, you know what I mean? Valdi, 1975, uh, Canadian. Valdi. Uh, very granola. Uh, uh, um, I'm trying to get him right now. I, 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 Paul Rothschild. Is that his name? That, I think so. He produced The Doors. Paul Rothschild was the producer of the Valdi record, I believe. Anyway, Jim Horn was on that. And I remember Klaus. That's where I met Klaus Vorman, the bass player. And uh, Jim Keltner was on it. Jim Horn and and again Klaus Foreman. So that was a, a very interesting project. You were I forgot uh, I forgot he was Canadian. Yeah, yeah. He uh I think he lives in Salt Spring Island. He's a very granola guy. He's like the Bill Henderson of Chilliwack. They all live on the, one of the islands. I don't know how they can afford it, but they can. Because right. I can't even afford to go back to Vancouver now. It's impossible. California is like that, isn't it? Really expensive. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Well, tell me about that tune, Spirit of uh, the Moonrise. Um that was a uh, nice rocker. Yeah. A rocker. That was, I had a bunch of these pieces that I've been writing. One was the guitar riff that, that uh, opens the, opens the song. Then there's the chorus guitar riff. Then I, then I wrote the middle sections for the piano right there. And I had these pieces and J Tim Joseph who heard all the pieces and said, let me try an arrangement on this. So he did an ABC, ABC, uh, a little form thing on it. And that was the form that we ended up with on the record right there. And then him and I, uh, uh, I told him, I had the line, uh, saw it in a dream, a girl rides across her native land. And that's what I had. And, and Joe and I uh, got together and constructed a short narrative about, uh, you know, what we thought this dream could, could possibly mean and stuff. And uh, again, it was his... Uh, Joe did a great drum track on it, which we use on the record. And I'm using, I'm using still with regular people. Like Shannon uh, Forrest plays the bass drum. 
to the set that's a that's a, a sampled set there and uh uh i also brought mike mcdonald in on it because i wanted to have him i wanted to have him on this album here he's such a good friend and uh he's such a an effective iconic singer you know and when you hear his voice and uh that was uh that was it you know it just we started working on it and painting it and joe we'd bring in harmonies and we got to once you have the blueprint for it you get to paint it and try experiments on it and do harmony parts and do little guitar parts and stuff like that the trick is not getting it overproduced that's really hard when you know how to do it well you know what i mean how you, you know how to craft it you gotta you resist the temptation to put stuff on that's why the beatles records sound so good because george martin was there and limited their options you know instead of putting all of them in, although there are a few that have everything in the kitchen sink like i am the walrus and uh, and magical mystery tour which are like two of my favorite cuts by the way madman is my favorite album it's got to be you know what i mean the paul really? master davy johnson first one he played on yeah absolutely when I, I when I interviewed Bruce Hornsby, I, and God knows, I don't know why I can't get the guy anymore. I've interviewed him in person. <laughs> but anyway, oh. Bruce just did Mad Men Across Water from that, that covers album years ago. Oh, did 90s, he really? I think. And he did a pretty good job of it. Yeah. But I, I asked him, I said, so is Mad Men your favorite album? And he said, no, no, no. It's, uh, he's telling me Connections is my favorite album. But he said, Mad right. Men, he, he loved the, the, the fact that it was, Elton pulled off the ultimate ominous vibe on that song. That's right. right. Incoming Absolutely. doom, like a, what's going on here? Absolutely. He had that darkness, that Jimmy Page darkness that Zeppelin had a little bit there, you know what I mean? Of this just impending danger, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but uh, that's, uh, was an amazing album. You know? you know, Indian Sunset made me cry when I was 13. Oh, me years too. Old. Me too. I wore that. So I wore many of those albums out. You know, I thought that would just change my life. The first Elton John album and, the, and that second one, Mad Men, just were life changers to me. You know, yeah. that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be, literally, I wanted to be Elton John when I was a, a, a junior in high school. Oh, you did okay. You did okay. Oh, first. well, thank uh, you. But, uh, you know, I'm just happy that Elton, when we won Record of the Year for Rosanna, Elton was the first person in the audience to stand up and give us applause. And that means more to me than all the billions of streams you can possibly get, you know? Yeah. Forgotten Toys is the brand new EP from David Page. It's a long time coming. He spent his whole life working with a whole bunch of musicians. We'll have links to the Toto website where you can pick it up in the description. Make sure you like our video. Keep in mind the entire first interview is online right now. We'll have a link to it. And keep looking back for links to the brand new interview in its entirety. We'll be having that up in the next couple of weeks. And there'll be a link in the description. Subscribe to our channel, share our videos, and comment. I'm John Bowden. This is Rock History Music. Take care of yourself.